you open up uh, your Bibles, I'll just read one text, uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Uh, Roman capitolul 2, versetul 13. For not the hearers, everybody say hearers. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers, everybody say doers. Doers of the law will be justified. Pentru că nu cei ce aud legea să neprihăniți, neprihăniți înaintea lui Dumnezeu, ci cei ce împlinesc legea aceasta vor fi socotiți, neprihăniți. Put your hand on your Bible. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us today in your worship, in your song, in praise. Let the Spirit come, Lord, Father God, as we honor you by walking in obedience to your word. Thank you, Jesus. We pray all this in the mighty name. Above every other name, the name of Jesus, the strong Son of God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Actions speak. Finish, help me out. Actions speak. Actions speak louder than words. Years ago, uh, Andy Stanley wrote a book called Louder Than Words. In the very introduction of the book, he starts off talking about his father, Charles Stanley. In the introduction, he talks about how Charles Stanley was a deacon in the First Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia. And as a deacon, the senior pastor had resigned and moved on to a different church, and there was no senior pastor at the First Baptist Church of Atlanta. During that time, the board decided to put Charles Stanley as a serving leader, as a serving pastor. Some people were not okay with that. Some people opposed him. Some people did not agree for him to be the interim pastor. During that time, uh, there was drama in church. One Wednesday evening, when there was the midweek service, there were some announcements being made. During those announcements, as he stood before the church, another deacon came before him, called him a liar, and punched him in front of the entire church that night. Andy Stanley seeing his dad hit in the face in church. And he'll never forget, and he shares this with the rest of the church. He looked at his dad. His dad fell back almost to, his, to the ground. He stood right back up, and he looked the other man in the eye. Never hit him, never yelled at him, never said another word. The deacon was embarrassed, left. He never showed up at that church. The rest of the The, ch the people fell in line. And that was the moment, this man says, Andy Stanley, that was the moment when he became the pastor of First Baptist Church of Atlanta. Because actions speak louder than words. Tonight I want to talk about very briefly, Avem Cina Domnule. There is a difference between hearing God's word and doing God's word. And there's a problem because we confuse the two. We confuse what it means to hear God's word and what it means to do God's word because what happens is the person who hears God's word is right next to the person who does God's word. And they look very similar. They come to the same church. They attend the same services. They hear the same sermons. They sing the same songs. But the problem is the difference between someone who hears God's word and someone who does God's word. When you hear God's word, something is in you, okay, it's good, it's good theory. I know I have to do it. I know it's good for me, it's, it's, it, it's for my benefit, but they never do it. They never give up the sin, they never give up the relationship, they never commit to a lifestyle that sends those friends, that past, that guilt is no longer mine. Your words change. Someone say amen. Your words change. Cuvântul din limba ta change. I'm going to not just hear, I'm going to do God's word. I want to open up and I want to share some scripture. We'll go into two distinctions between a person who hears God's word and a person who does God's word. Mark chapter 4 verse 20. New King James Version. But these are the ones sown on the good ground. Jesus tells the parable about the seeds. Those who hear the word. Hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. God's given you a seed. Hear me. 
Some of you have talent. Some of you have gifts. Some of you have calling. Some of you have um, uh, wealth. Some of you have influence. And the problem is God's giving you that seed, but you're just sitting on the seed. There's no fruit bearing in your life. No aduchurada in your life. In your marriage, in your home, in your workplace, there is no rada. There's kuvinte, there's anjuratur, there's wall, there's doors that fly shut in arguments, but there's no spirit of God in you. There is no rod in you. Actions prove who someone is. Words just prove who they pretend to be. John chapter 10 verse 27 says it this way. Jesus says, the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. I know them and they follow me. James says it this way. But be doers. Everybody say doers. Doers of the word and not just hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and is not a doer, man, we hear we have to forgive. We come to, we come to church, we pray the prayers, but we're unwilling to forgive. We're unwilling to ask for forgiveness. We're unwilling to honor God with the tide. We're unwilling to give of our time. We're deceiving ourselves. Verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. He observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. Verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I want to read it in Romanesta because it's so important. Feats in Blinator. Feet simply in the Not a preacher, but God's word. No, no, my ascultator. The world is full of people who listen. Podcasts, YouTube channels, Netflix, Amazon Prime, audio books. The world is filled with them. Înșelându-vă singur. Căci dacă ascultă cineva cuvântul și nu îl împlinește cu fapte, seamnă ca un om care îți privește fața firească într-o oglindă și după ce a privit, pleacă și uită îndată cum era. Dar cine își va adânci privirile în legea desăvârșită, the holy word, care este legea slobozeniei, the freedom, și vă stărui în ea, nu ca un ascultător uituc, și ca un împlinitor cu fapte va fi fericit în lucrarea lui. There's two things I want to point out quickly tonight about the difference between a hearer and a doer. A hearer and a doer. God says hearers are not the same as doers. And the first thing I want to talk about is separation. Everybody calls, say separation. There is a separation that occurs when you are a doer. Amen? There is a separation that occurs in your, li in, your, in your life, in your limba, in the way you think, in the way you know your destiny is not what it used to be. But now you've, you've created a separation. And God makes, and through the word of God, Jesus makes the separation. There are hearers and there are doers. There is the common and there is the holy. There are the cowards and there is the courageous. There are the goats and there are... The sheep. There are the doubtful and there are the faithful. They are the liars and there are the truth speakers. They are indecisive and then there are perseverance. And we're going to talk about that last one. But Jesus, first thing he says is my sheep know my voice. And all of a sudden the voices of other people don't matter because in their lives there is a separation. And there is a separation that goes between the godly and the godless. And tonight you need to ask yourself a question. Have you created a separation or separatie in viața ta from this world? Are you consuming the same movies that the world is consuming? Are you having the same language that the world is having in their lives? Are you having the same desires, the same emotions, the same instability in your life that the world has? If you do, there is no separation in your life. In Romans chapter 2, verses 5 
through 8, the New King James Version says this. But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath, uh, wrath in the day of wrath and revelation in the righteous judgment of God who will render to each according to his words, emotions, posting on the internet. No, none of those things. What did you do? Where did your feet go? How much did you help? What was the sacrifice? What was the sweat on your brow? According to your deeds. Verse 7 and 8. Eternal life to those who by patience continue in doing good. Seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth. But obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. In, uh, in the message translation, I love the way it says this. Every refusal and avoidance of God's adds fuel to the fire. In the end, you will get what's coming to you. The reason why so many people are hearers and not doers is because we don't believe God is right. We don't believe him. He says, hear my voice. Walk with me. I'm calling you. I've, I've changed you. I've transformed me not for your purpose, but for his purpose. He's transformed you. All of a sudden, they hear, and, I, and this is why we don't listen. Hear me. Because we think we're smarter than God. God, you changed me, but now I can make more money. Now I'm clean and off drugs. Now I don't, I'm no longer addicted to pornography. Now I'm not longer a minchinos. Now I'm no longer, but you transformed me, but I have a better idea and a better plan than you do. And we tell God and we don't trust him with what he wants to do. He says to us, hear my word and then fulfill my word. I don't have time and I, I don't know if I put it. But the word of God says Abraham was credited to his bank account. His, I'm going to say it later. Righteousness because of what he did. If you go to Genesis chapter 12, chapter 13, you will, you will read the story of Abraham. But one of the, sh the shortest verses, saddest verses, is right before that, is his father. Anybody know the name of Abraham's father? Terah. Terah was the name of, of Abraham's father. And if you read scripture, go back to the book of Genesis and write about Terah. It says Terah packed his bags, bought a ticket, one-way ticket, not two, or, but he, he bought a ticket one-way to Canaan. The Bible says he bought all his tickets, he packed all his bags, he got all his food ready, not to go to the land of Ur, but to go to the land of Canaan. The problem is he stopped in Ur, he settled in Ur, the Bible says he settled, and he died in Ur. There are many people who hear God's word, start out, but somehow, some way, they stopped doing what God said to do. Romans chapter 2, I read that, chapter 7. I want to read from you. Luke chapter 16. This is the story of um, when Jesus says, he gives the example between heaven and hell. And the poor man Lazarus and the rich man. They don't give the rich man's name if you remember. And he looks at Abraham and he looks at Lazarus. And he says, and besides all this, between us there is a great gulf. Am I saying that right? A great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here... To you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. And, and the other translation says, a wide area separates us. Hear me, young man, married man, husband, grandfather, hear me. If you do not separate yourself in this life, God will separate it for you. I'm going to say it again. Either you will separate yourself or God will. There is a moment in your life when I say, I am not just a hearer of the word, I become a doer of the word. And a person who is a doer of the words understands that he must separate himself from what everybody else is doing. The world is not pokait, frati Lord. The world doesn't want to tell the truth and it doesn't have to tell the truth. We have to tell the truth. We have to stand up for righteousness. We are called the righteousness of God. There is no way, no how. There is no way, no how. The internet and the website can tempt you. When God has said, I have made you an overcomer. Hear me. 
You must create a separation if you are to become a doer of what God has called you to do. There is no if, ands, or buts. That is the God's word, and it is yes and amen. It is yes and amen. Charles Spurgeon said, if there is no visible difference between you and the world, there is no invisible difference. In other words, temirase injury. You can't be at the nightclub, you can't be on the website, you can't be doing different things and just say, hey, I haven't created a separation. The spiritual world sees you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Spiritual world sees you. Sees you how you pray, how you don't pray. See you how you praise, how you don't praise. Sees the words that you say, the text messages that you sent, the things that you read. Angels sitting right behind you reading the same words. If there is no separation in your life, are you really a hearer of the word or are you a doer of the word? Number one, say separation. If you are to be a doer of God's word, you need to understand one thing. Sunday nights is God's house. Sunday mornings is God's house. Amen. Prayer needs to be in your life. Husband, wife, prayer needs to be in your table, at your home. Worship needs to be in your home. Amen. God needs to be on your lips and Jesus needs to be in your heart. That is a doer of the word, not just a hearer. The second thing is endurance. Everybody say endurance. Another word is to say perseverance. Perseverance. If you are to be a, a doer of God's word, you are to be a person who perseveres. One person said, enthusiasm is common, endurance is rare. One more time. Enthusiasm is common. A gasesk. I can see someone enthusiastic about soccer. I can see someone enthusiastic about NBA 2K Live. I can see someone enthusiastic about an Instagram web page. Enthusiasm is common, but endurance is rare. Without commitment, you'll never start. And without consistency, you'll never finish. I want to tell you, and I, and I don't have, I want to leave some time for China Domloin. I want to tell you that if in your life you don't endure, today you're up with God. Tomorrow you're down with God. Today Villa Biserica, tomorrow no my Villa Biserica. Today you feel like praying, tomorrow you feel like praying. Jesus does not do that with us. Amen. Astăzi mă place de moacata, mâine nu mă place de moacata. God says, okay, astăzi te matur, right? Today I'm not going to pay attention to your prayers. Next week, let me think about it. I'll see if I if I'm going to accept you. Some of you are laughing. Hear me. How many of you have seen people in church, this church, other churches, growing up, and they came, they were on fire for God, we're going to do prayer meetings, we're going to do, and then two months pass by, two weeks pass by, you don't see them. I want to tell you something. That's a hearer. It's not a doer. The Bible says when a man is going off to war, Jesus says, he will sit down and count the cost. What's going to cost him? He's going to make a decision. Is it worth going to war? Or is it not going, worth going to war? Should I make peace? Should I send a, a, a couple folks there to have a, I'll, I'll give them tribute, but I don't have to go to war. There are people that don't understand that you have to be endure. You have to endure, persevere. The Bible says back in the seeds, by perseverance produce a fruit of 30, 60, 90, 100% double. There are some old heads, some elders in this church who can tell you about perseverance. When it's not popular, when people don't feel like it, when people don't, eh, it's not that. You see them in church. Let me ask you guys a question. And let's just be, most of us are, are here members and we're part of this church. How would you feel if you would see me once a month at church? How would you, how would that make you? <laughs> I don't know. How about once, every two months, three months? When a lot of people are here, when we invite friends from out of town. I remember growing up in um, the Elim Church in Florida. Uh, my dad knows there was a singer, wonderful, wonderful singer. God bless. She was a wonderful singer. She could sing. She would only show up for Christmas and Easter. Amen? 
She would only show up when it was, the convention's coming to Florida. She's at practice, never misses a practice. Wants the photo op, wants to take all the pictures, wants to be in the worship team pictures. After the convention, lose my phone number. Ghost, ghost me. Those are people who don't endure. The Bible says they're choked up by the, the things of this world. If you are going to be a doer of God's word, you have to separate yourself, church. But then you also have to understand you have to endure. You have to know what it means to love God. You've read scripture once, good, read it again. You read it twice, read it again. You prayed for 10 minutes, pray again. Amen? The Bible says God comes to us and wants to us to bear fruit again. Amen. We have to bear fruit. There are some people that don't listen. I don't know what. Something's getting into me tonight. I don't know. Hear me. Some of you have produced fruit when you were 20, when you were 40. But the problem is God's got fruit for you when you're 60. God's got fruit for you when you're 70. God's got fruit for you in New Hope Church. God's got fruit for you in this season of your life. And the problem is that is lacking because of endurance. Because if you prayed the same way you prayed when you were 60, oh hallelujah, the rivers of heaven would flow up in your house, in your spirit, in your, in, in your limba. There would be the Spirit of God that flows out. But the problem is you left that passion at 60 and now you're 70. And you're like, oh, that used to be the good old days. That's because the passion ain't here. It's back there. And God says bring that passion here and see what happens to the fruitfulness in your life. In um, Romans chapter 7, if, 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 I'm, if I'm not making a mistake, here we go. For what does Scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was, everybody say it counted. It was accounted to him for righteousness. I was reading my Bible this week and I realized that every one of us, we don't just have a bank account at Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Truist, SunTrust. I don't know who you use. Hear me. You have a bank account in heaven. You have a bank account in heaven. You do. God says, I accounted to him as righteousness. When God sees your prayer life, when God sees what you're doing here on earth, not in the physical but in the spiritual, all of a sudden your bank balance in heaven grows. That doesn't happen overnight. Amen? You don't just get a thousand bucks in your bank account. You put it in little by little. That happens in perseverance. Um, there are some people who persevere and some people who don't persevere. I want to tell you, church, you have to make it a habit to pray before God. When you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. When you, <laughs> when you are going through the valley and when you're up on the mountaintop. People need to know that you are a man, a woman of prayer, a man, a woman of worship, a man that doesn't go, can you say zonu bun, she says zonu my bun. That God lives in you come Monday the same he lives in you on Sunday. And if your language is changing, hear me. If your language is changing Sunday to Monday, Friday to Sunday, God sees all that. And your bank account in heaven is losing value. Um, I want to finish with this one thing. And I've gone too long. I wanted to just do a short, short message. Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Uh, I'm going to read verse 29 and verse 30. Um, here you go. Uh, because those whom he knew, God writes, in advance. Everybody say in advance. One more time. In advance. Yes. So God knew in advance. He who determined in advance would be conformed to the pattern, excuse me, pattern of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Now I want you to pay attention. Watch this. To those whom he determined in advance, he also called. And those whom he called, he also caused cause to be considered righteous and those whom he caused to be considered righteous he also glorified so it's like a step up if you want to look at it God said I knew you in advance you would hear the call you would have a convention you would have a moment you would have a prayer you would have an experience and he said I knew in advance you would be here July 7th is the 7th right July 7th August 7th 2022, thank you. August 7, 2022, you're in the house again. I knew that. And I knew that you want to be a doer, not just a hearer. You want to be separate. 
You want to endure. And I knew that in advance. So because I knew that in advance, I called you. I called you. I will never forget the testimony of a preacher saying that he was at, he was at a revival service. They were praying for people. They were pray, praying for people. And as they're praying for, for, for people, he's praying over this person for healing. He's praying over deliverance. He's praying for a new life, a, a transformation life. And then he hears, he hears the Holy Spirit. He hears the Holy Spirit. Her name is Sheila. Her name is Sheila. I've said this story before. And he walks over to this lady because he sees her over there praying out of a hundred people in the altar. Walks over there. He says, hey, Sheila, watch this by faith. Do you want me to pray for you? She says, how do I know? How do you know my name? He said, listen, I'm just by faith. I was over there. I looked over at you, you were praying, and I heard the voice of God say, I just felt it, I just felt, her name is Sheila. This lady started crying. She said, I've been in a relationship, I've been living with a man, I used to come to church, I used to be coming to prayer, and somehow, some way, I got tricked in the, by this world, and I, I've been living in sin, I've been doing some drugs, and I came to church tonight, and I said, God, here, listen. God, do you still know my name? Do you still know my name? He said to that preacher, her name is Sheila. Hear me. God knows you in advance. And then this is what he says. He points to you. He points to you and he says, And I've called you by name because I knew in advance. And then this is the next step up. He says, now, listen. I knew in advance you would accept Tam Kemat, and now look at me. You're righteous. You're righteous. Not because of you. No, 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 not because. No, 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 no. Because of him. You know who's jealous right now? The devil. Because he wants you to be a hearer. He wants you. No, my Awus Kuvantu, the book of James says, the demons. No and fear, but they don't do the will of God. And he wants you, and it's like I see a visual. It's more comfortable staying here. Don't be a doer. You have to give up some of this. You have to give up your Sundays. You've been watching NFL Sunday. Come on. You have to, you have to stay here. Don't become a doer. Just be comfortable. And God says, I've considered you righteous and then he said because I've considered you righteous this is the word of God you will be glorified what a mighty God we serve I look in my own life how can this piece of dirt that I am what I used to be what I used to say how I used to live how can God transform me and put me in front of you to preach his God his word me who was a legalist me who would sit in front of church and look at girls coming into church. Me who would, uh, who would, who would speak poorly of a preacher or of a pastor. Would sit there and, and rate the talent of the worship team. Would go to conventions. Hear me. Hear me. If he, and, and there's many more uh, testimonies. More powerful than, hear me. If God can say, I've known you in advance. And then I called you. Then I considered you righteous. Then I glorified you. Hear me. God can do mighty things. But you have to be a doer. You have to be a doer. Even if it's uncomfortable. Sometimes you read Bible. I read scripture. Man, it's not comfortable. But it's the truth. And I won't be transformed by just hearing the word. But until I do the word, then the transformation happens. When I fulfill God's word in my life. When I fulfill to give up the past. When I give up the guilt. It doesn't belong to me. The Bible says your past, your guilt doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to him. He took it up at the cross. When the enemy looks at you and says, I puck a tweet. Yes, I know. I confessed it to Jesus. What else you got, devil? What else you got? But I mean, see, I did. I mean, see, she pe tata, she pe mama, she pe... I did. But God has washed me clean. What else do you have? My I furat. I'm furat. I did. 
But Jesus has washed me. I'm no longer the thief. I'm no longer the liar. I'm no longer the past. I'm someone new. What else you got? Good. Dute. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says you are a new creation. There is a new creation within you. The Bible says stop thinking. So then listen. If you're going to be a doer, you have to create separation. When that used to be me. I don't recognize that man anymore. I don't recognize. There's a separation when you become a doer. And the second thing, you have to endure. You have to endure. That means, and I'll give you a practical advice. You have to create new habits. If you had a habit to do something on Friday night, you have to give yourself a new habit. Amen? Daka, you used to hang out with your friends and do this and do that. The Bible says... You are now a new creation. New creation has new habits, has a new, listen, address, has a new address, has new friendships, has new relationships. The way you break from the past is you plot a, a, a new destiny. And so Friday nights you used to hang out with the cri at the crib with the guys, drinking, okay, talking about, okay, listen, no more. On Friday nights instead you go into evangelism, prayer night, Bible study, you name it, you call it, God knows. But there's the new habits. Because God has called you to, as a doer, to be a separate and to endure. Amen? Amen. God bless you, church. Um, I, went, I went past my time uh, tonight. I want to invite the pastors. We're going we're gonna to stand. We're going to read God's word. We're going to take Chinat Domdui. The Bible says, as long as you remember to do this, to fulfill it, to Avem Chinat Domdui, don't. Don't be insensitive to what it means to take Chinat Domlui. Don't become insensitive to do what God's called you to do. Amen? God bless you, church.